And then he left and went to ESPN. ESPN had just let people go. Oh, my gosh, they're paying him that that amount of money. So there's backlash maybe there. And I don't know what kind of dripped over into college game day because let's face it with coach Corso, how long is he going to be on there on the set? And they're looking for somebody who has a dynamic personality. Legendary sports media member, Dan Patrick has some thoughts on the newest hiree of ESPN, Pat McAfee. So what is that entertainment value? Who's going to be that guy and Pat. And sometimes you may consciously or subconsciously not realize you're trying too hard. You know, they may feel like Pat's trying to be the villain or trying to be the agitator. I'd agree. There is some consensus among sports fans that feel this way. But as far as, you know, who likes him or doesn't like him, all I know is I grew up in the era of Howard Cosell and 50% loved him and 50% hated him, but 100% were tuning in for him. Which is exactly, amongst other variables, what ESPN is banking on. When asked of the reports McAfee pays New York Jets quarterback Aaron Rodgers $1 million for his appearances, Patrick said the following. It just, it, you know, are you a journalist or not? And Pat's not a journalist. He's an entertainer. And I do think that journalism is really with small letters now. I don't think there's a lot of people who aspire to be journalist anymore. You know, I don't know if people think that you can make a great living by being a journalist. You got to be an entertainer. You got to get clicks and you got, so it's, it's, it's exploded and whatever Pat's approach is to entertainment and you want to pay somebody to come on fine. Um, I'm not tuning in for journalism with Pat. I'm tuning in for uh, entertainment. And if he wants to have Aaron Rodgers on, um, and Aaron Rodgers wants to say whatever he wants to say. I mean, that's Pat's show and Pat's audience. And ESPN has to answer for that. A good point, which the interviewer, Jimmy Tran, a longtime employee of Sports Illustrated, asked Patrick about. Well, do you think ESPN is off the hook in a little way, in a little bit of a way? They just simulcast Pat's show. Like, they don't own Pat's show. Like, Pat still owns his show. It's more of a Pat's renting space sort of on ESPN type of deal. Does that take any... Well, who's paying uh, ESPN? Yeah, then yeah. it's ESPN. Yeah. I'm 40 hour, 48 hours in, and I consulted with a now good friend of mine, Joe Rogan, after he got COVID, and I've been doing a lot of the stuff that he recommended in his podcasts and you know on the phone to me. I'm thankful for people like Joe stepping up and using their voice. I'm thankful for my medical squad. Um, and I'm thankful for all the love and support I've gotten, but I've been taking monoclonal antibodies, ivermectin, zinc, vitamin C and D, HCQ. Circling back to the Rogers front, Trana would ask Dan Patrick if McAfee should be more poignant with his approach. As we all know now, Aaron Rodgers spews a ton of misinformation, not only on McAfee's show, but also ESPN. So should McAfee do something to combat Rogers rambling nonsensically? Here's what Patrick said. Would I like to see him push back? Yeah. If Aaron was on my show, would there be pushback? Yeah. But I was brought up in a different era. I mean, I'm 30 years older than Pat McAfee. I came in at CNN, you know, doing things where the product was most important and you had to be a journalist and approach it that way. Pat didn't, you know, he was a punter right. and right. all of a sudden he's got a show and he's making millions of dollars and I got Nick Saban and Aaron Rodgers and I'm going to have them on and I'll compensate them. Fine. Kudos to Trana and Sports Illustrated. Please, please check out the full pod because with Patrick, it is a really good convo. And is also someone I would love to interview one day. That's his legendary status in this field. Jimmy can also be found on Twitter at Jimmy Trana. Here's how I feel about this. ESPN did pay McAfee to be entertaining. His YouTube numbers are humongous, by the way. I'm sure I haven't checked the podcast, sports podcast division lately. I guarantee you he's top five, if not number one. ESPN, as Patrick alluded to, and as we've talked about many times, is not paying McAfee to be a journalist, though he said he was a journalist at one point. He did say that. 
the standards of journalism have been bent so far because you see like ridiculous right wing outlets like the Gateway Pundit cosplay as journalists. I hate to say it, with a lot of the war coverage that's going on, they're cosplaying as journalists when really they're serving as a mouthpiece for one side of what's going on in the Middle East. Regardless, Patrick is right that he came up at a different time. Many came up at a different time because now, and this is very sad, Patrick is also spot on when he says it's all about being entertaining, it's all about clicks. That is 100% the name of the game. And you know what doesn't get a lot of clicks? Digging. Going and uh, filing FOIA requests um, and uh, calling up sources, making sources. Not making, but having the bond to then have a source. The rule is you got to have three sources. I guarantee most media outlets are just running with one or a reporter will run with one. And then you'll see that misinformation reposted everywhere until it's debunked. We do have a shortage of credible people in media because as I have seen it, and I'm sorry, man, I really like Jimmy Trana, but Sports Illustrated, they went from having sports journalists like Jeff Perlman, Rick Riley on the back cover to if you go to their website, all it is is creating a story out of one tweet and then quoting that person in like two paragraphs and ending the story. Media has become the center point of click slash aggregation instead of giving insightful pieces. I understand that there are a lot of people who want to get into this business, but they want to get into it for the wrong reasons. And frankly, it upsets me. It upsets me a lot. And one area, I know I'm rambling here, but one area that's really crushed me personally is music journalism. Like back in the day with Rolling Stone and Vibe Magazine, where have these people gone? I know they've aged, but like, where are the newcomers? They're non-existent. The music space is not being catered to. The hip hop space is not being catered to when it comes to journalism. A lot of the guys who you could argue our journalists also are in bed with some betting sites. Some of them are mouthpieces for management. Some of them are mouthpieces for players. So I don't even know what to label like the source driven news breakers anymore. I think it's just its own division. But when it comes to watchdog journalism, almost non-existent, sadly.